Hey everybody, welcome to Nation. My name is Jersey, and you are here. What's going on? If it's your first time checking us out, I really appreciate that. Uh, this is available via podcast, so iTunes, Google Play, SoundCloud, um, and it's also going to be on YouTube. So if you're a watcher or a listener, either way, it's there. Hopefully, it doesn't suck too much for you, and you want to go back and watch some of the old episodes. We are in the 40s now, so definitely go back and check that out. And if you are part of the nation, somebody who watches, you give us a thumbs up on every video, and you comment, what is going on? It's because of you that I get to do the show, so hello, hello, hello. And if you are part of the elite, somebody who watches every show, thumbs up, subscribes, comments, all the cliche stuff, and you buy your supplies through me, which is amazing, you, my friend, are the elite, you are one of the cool kids, and it is because of you that I get to eat more than just ramen, so thank you for doing that. Uh, if you have any questions or you'd like to buy supplies, I am a window cleaning resource rep. My number 862-312-2026. That is literally my cell phone, so you can shoot me a text anytime. Say what's up. Tell me my nose isn't too terribly crooked or that you want to buy supplies and it's all good. I really do appreciate when you guys um, call. I got an influx this week as things kind of ramp back up with people that say, hey, everything's in my cart, man. Can you put the order in? That's awesome. That's how I get credit. So high five to all of you that have done that. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And that brings us to our show this week. We are sitting down with the man, Peter Artusa. The Peter Artusa. You've heard him. You've seen him. He's here in the flesh. What's going on, man? What's going on, Josh? It's humbling to be here, man. It is awesome. You have a great show. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. We're just talking about this as we were prepping and setting things up. It is the first day of spring today that we're recording this, and you guys have nothing but beautiful weather, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. We're expecting another 14 inches uh, uh, tomorrow. So, yeah, it's going to be a great first day of spring. Oh, that's awful. That's awful. And you, you, had, set out, you had sent out postcards and everything, and... Weather, being a weather business like this sucks because you just, you can't control weather, but weather sure controls you. It does. You're right. I mean, we work through rain, but you can't work through snow. I'm not putting my guys out of my trucks out on, you know, with a foot of snow. That's crazy. Yeah, that'd be the most expensive uh, bumper car ride ever, too, with just sliding around. And like you said, our cars hit today. I mean, I followed Chris's roadmap, man. They hit on the first day of spring. Phones are ringing, and and that's it. That's it's it's it is what it that's is. It, I guess dude. we're used to it by now, but that sucks. Yeah, we live in the Northeast. That's what we're used to. Yeah, no kidding. That's why I don't live in the North anymore, and I moved down south. <laughs> But so we are talking today about buying and selling a business, kind of the ins and outs uh, of everything that people can know. There's a lot of interest in this because everybody has known someone or run across somebody who is in the process of selling their business or they're, they're retiring or they have equipment or they just wanted to stop doing it and nobody really gets a totally kind of def definite answer from anybody on how to do it. And I just want to kind of go over that a little bit today. So uh, tell us a little bit kind of about your backstory, the companies that you have and had and what you've done and kind of just let people know who you are and what you've done. Dude, years ago, back when I was in high school, which seems like 100 years ago, I, my brother had a huge janitorial company. He had well over 100 employees, four offices, and he did storefront window cleaning part of you know, his, his services. So during high school, that's what I did. I worked for I worked for uh, my brother. Yeah. And there was a window cleaning company called Middletown Window Cleaning. And this dude was old school, man. He his name was Nate Sikorsky. Cigar out of his mouth. <laughs> and dude, back then they had like broomsticks they used to, <laughs> to you know wet the windows, yeah. brushes, the old brass NRA squeegees. Yeah. So it taught me how to how to clean windows and I did it. And then in uh, 1984, I, I joined the police academy and kind of gave it up for a while and became a cop and did 22 years of service as a police officer. My last 15 years was canine. I, I ran two police dogs through there. Nice. But I started working for a local window cleaner back in about 91. And all I did for him was the storefront window route, his storefront route. So I kind of kept that going. And then, you know, it came the time when I had to retire. 
Now, my wife's an entrepreneur, too. I mean, she has a, a huge insurance agency in my hometown. She has 12 people working for her. She has two principals with her, two other partners with her. Nice. And when I retired, she was like, all right, what are you doing? And I'm like, <laughs> what are you talking about, man? I just retired 22 years. She goes, uh, no. She goes, pass out. She goes, and go find something to do. Well, you know, Josh, the only thing I knew how to do was be a cop or clean windows. Yeah. So I came up with this brilliant brainstorm in like the worst economic times our country has seen back in 07 to start a window cleaning, blind cleaning company. So I took all my retirement money and I started A Sparkling View, which was, you know, Chris Lamardini's direct competition. That's how I got to meet Chris. Oh. So calling up the office saying, who are you to start a company? <laughs> I mean, and you know, we became friends after that. It was pretty cool. It was a pretty cool story, but I started that company we did blind cleaning we did um, window cleaning and then we did blind sales too. So to this day, we still sell blinds on top of every, all our other services. Yeah. And that's where we went. So, you know, I started, I started a sparkling view within, five or so years grew it to about 1200 customers had two employees including not including myself and um you know then that guy who i was doing the storefront window cleaning for he sold me his storefront route nice and that's how it all started man it just started snowballing from there it kept growing and growing nice and then all of a sudden chris lamadini's calls me up one day and he's like hey we gotta talk man <laughs> So, cool. so in total, so you, how many businesses have you purchased total? Uh, we have, lists and businesses. With all we things. have um, the storefront rent count. Then I did all county. Then I did another small residential company two years ago. And then last year, I don't know if you'd call it a sale. I got this whole thing working with this dude. And, you know, it's, there's, non-disclosure it's, an, ar it's an, ar an arrangement we'll, we'll call it it is it's nice. an arrangement and i'm doing all his window cleaning now until he kind of finds himself and figures out what he's doing he basically forwarded the phones to us here nice and um we're running we're running his show for him until he figures out what he's going to do i'm hoping you know like you know what i would really like josh is for him to say you know what frigate i'm going to work for you let yeah. me open an office down you know where he is and and he comes to work for me and he can do his thing and work for me and we're all make out you know nice. yeah. See, he really is a good guy and and i i like the arrangement we have right now it's pretty cool nice nice so you you're 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 you you got it so tell me the difference in your brain the first company you bought from the last one like how nerve-wracking is it the first time going into things and exploring things and, and tell me before the first time and the last time the differences. Well, Josh, you know, when, when you people thinking about selling their businesses, first of all, you got to realize why, why are they selling their businesses for? So, you know, you, you got to get, the, you got to get the tax returns because that's what's going to give you the true picture of what you're looking at with a company. Yeah. And what I found Josh is that there are so many companies out there that power washing window cleaning companies, they always have something else going on. Yeah. Something. I mean, I understand it. I, I get it. But, you know, if you're running a dynamic, world class company, how the frig do you have the time to run another one? Yeah. In all counties, is when, when Chris approached me, well, going back to what you said, right? How did I feel? Outside, I was like, Pfft fucking piece of cake dude <laughs> inside i was shitting my pants man because all county the, the picture that chris gave is that we were the biggest company in the world there is no one bigger than all county window cleaning right yeah, yeah. you were this and you are that well i found out it, you know we're it was somewhat true but it, we weren't the biggest by no means right and um it was about seven months worth of due diligence before chris and i finally struck a deal and you know wrote him a check and we took it over in uh, november of oh of um 13 i took it over so we've been running it ever since nice built brand new offices this year we, we just moved in in january and chris actually stopped by last week and checked it out he was nice 
he was pretty impressed, man. It was cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the big thing, like you said, too, is that you can and go on the internet one time. Everybody, it's a like measuring contest. Everybody has this big thing and they, they put themselves out. And, and there's one guy that I know a lot of people talk about. Oh, he's like the biggest employees and I got all this stuff. And it's like his dad that is a part time helper. And like the people who know the company, you know the company and you see what's portrayed on the company and it's completely different. So, exactly like you said, if somebody's going to sell you even a list, you have to see really what that's been generated. It doesn't matter what people say. It matters what's actually happened. And you also, Josh, another thing you got to do is you really got to check out the area in which you're buying it. You've got to see what your competition is. You've got to see what your competitors are doing. That's huge. Yeah. Are they are they ramping up to grow? Are they adding new services? What is their life cycle? Yeah. What, what are they primarily doing? Are they doing residential? Are they doing storefronts? What are they doing? Because if you're going to buy out a company that's a small guy, all right, and then you got to go against like a company my size or, you know, your I mean, big companies, you know, yeah, if you're a great entrepreneur, you can take over and move. But if you're kind of mediocre or not unsure what you're doing, you could really hurt yourself. Too. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I was, I was afraid here at first, but you know what, what I got going on here, Chris's systems, cause this is a systems driven company times 10 Yeah. and all the employees here work for the system. They don't work for the company. They know their spots. Yeah. And I, Josh, I am so blessed with my employees. Chris, I got Chris's sister here. <laughs> nice, nice. Right? Yeah. She is my, she's my office manager. And, dude, she is the fucking, I'm sorry, she is just king. She really yeah. is. She really runs this office well. And she's been here the longest. She's been here, what, 14 years? Wow. She knows the company inside and out, man. Yeah. Yeah, so starting with the operations managers to the assistant operations managers down to the supervisors, They've all been here 10 years to five years. Wow. So they've been here as long, if not longer, than I have. Yeah. So they know the company. So when I came in, I'm not saying that Chris checked out. Don't get me wrong. Chris didn't. But he had WCR going, man. And right. that's that's a behemoth now, right? Yeah. So he was kind of going there. So I came in, and all counties now my baby. And I made Chris a promise when I bought this company that I would never screw this company over. And you had a fresh set of eyes that came in and a fresh set of passion that came in. And we added a couple services that they that they didn't have before, like blind sales and a couple other things that we're doing. And this year I'm adding a new roof treatment that's fresh out into the field. We're doing that this year. Nice. Um, we're doing some other things that are being built as I speak. <laughs> so it's kind of exciting and it, it gets everyone going here. You know, it, it just gets the blood going. Yeah. But you know, what you got to do when you buy an existing company is you really, when you buy it, you have to add value to it. Because if you're just going to buy it and run it as it was, it's the same old thing, man. You got to add value. Right. And I'm a huge, huge advocate of networking. I belonged all county before I bought it. Didn't belong to one chamber of commerce. Hmm. I belong to eight. We have eight chambers of commerce that we belong to. I sit on two boards. Wow. One, not chamber boards, but personal boards. One is Heroes Indeed, and the other is Leadership Orange. So I belong to those groups. I do some speaking with the Entrepreneurial Assistance Program. So it's always out there. And what it is, man, it's just constantly talking, talking the game and talking the business. That's yeah. what it's about. And that's when all the opportunities come in and all the other companies come in. And, you know, I'm if I see a company, there's a couple companies out there I want to buy. And I send the guy an email probably once every two months, never responds back to me. Yeah. But, that's right. It, when it when the time comes, they'll know that it's to you. Now, the one thing I always get from people too is people first they don't understand that their blood, sweat, and tears what they put into it. The company itself is what you gauge, not like oh you don't know how hard I worked. Well, I don't care how hard you worked. I just care at the end result. You know, you may be running as fast as you possibly can and still come in last place. It doesn't matter that you know. So 
testing, you know, the, the one thing that people always say is that, um, uh, why are you getting out of the business? And they say, oh, well, it's medical reasons. That one always scares me because that's like the most common kind of reason people get out. And it, it's, I, have you run into that one yet? People say medical reasons. No, but I, I, I hear you with medical reasons. And Josh, let's say, people just don't take care of themselves. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know? I'm, I'm the extreme. I suffer from OCD and I am just like, I, I am huge in the gym and not the like, you know, the lift things up, put it down gym. We go, I go to a boot camp gym. So yeah, it's all yeah. cardio and all this kind of like a CrossFit. Right, right. And this year I'm a big runner too. I like doing 5Ks, 10Ks. And this year I dedicated myself to run a marathon in October. Nice. So I started training in February for a marathon, which is kind of cool. Yeah. So it's a little obsessive. You know what I mean? Right, right. That's what makes a good business owner too, though. That's exactly what does it. And when you get these guys, you know I mean? We've talked before where you get these guys that are like, ah, you know, the hardest thing for me to do, Josh, when I bought All County was get out of the field. Yeah. It was tough, man. It was tough because I liked being in the field. But when you got something like this, you got to kind of be in the office. You got to run the company, you know? But every once in a while, probably once a month, once every two months, I'll strap on and I'll just go meet a crew someplace nice. and not jump on a ladder. Yeah. And all of a sudden they're like, whoa, what the hell's going on? What's he doing here? You know? And then all of a sudden you see it. And I just like doing it. It's kind of like a brain, you know, it, it lets your brain rest for a minute. Right. You, know? you have to decide if you uh, have a job or you have a company. Because having right. a company is different than just having a job. If you just show up and do work. And that's one of the hardest things that... Every time somebody talks about an employee, well, I could never have employees because my customers love me and they only want me and I'd have to be there. Otherwise, I'm going to lose a lot of people. And the truth of the matter is that you're not to run. You have only 100% of yourself. So to run a company takes all that 100%. You can't take 50% of it and do the work and 50% to run it. Now your running is only 50%. You're running it into the ground at that point. You are absolutely correct. And you know what it is also is you what you just touched on about you you know you being the brand i was with a sparkling view i was the brand no question about it yeah but what i did is when i came here i lost a lot of the sparkling view customers because all county kind of had a reputation of being the the most expensive and the and the crappiest window cleaners you know that not crappy that's probably a bad word it's just it was very expensive for what you were getting you yeah. know what i mean so I found a way to make myself the brand again, and I did it through social media. Nice. And we exploded over the last two years on social media. I am on Twitter, LinkedIn, Tumblr, Facebook, and uh, Instagram, and I just pound it daily with blogging and all this stuff. And so, yeah, making myself back into the brand again, yeah. and it's coming back around, which is cool. you know. But what you touched on before, Josh, about companies – you know, when you go to buy one, everyone thinks their company's worth a million dollars. And yeah. you know what? To them, it is. You are absolutely correct. But there is a formula to figure out how, how you buy. Yeah. And I've seen it. I've seen it like 30 percent. They'll You know, they'll give you 30 percent or, you know, you take your one year's worth of, of gross and the whole 90 yards. Christ, you know, I have comp- I have people call me to want to know if I want to sell. Yeah. And, you know what? I'm not ready yet. Yeah. It's just it's not – I haven't done what I needed to do yet. Right. There's still something right here that has to be finished before I can move on and do something else. Right. And you know what? My, my, my little guy graduates this year, so I got college to go through with him yet and you know, four years of school with him. So I'm not really ready yet to do it. And there's just so much to do here that yeah. we really want to explode, you know, and yeah. – and, and make ourselves uh, better than what we are. You yeah. Know? And that's one thing. And uh, people may not even watch this episode or listen to it because they're like, I'm not selling. But the thing is, is that someday, right now, like you said, you have so much in it. There's so much left to do. It's unfinished. You have to stay there. Like you're not thinking of selling. But someday, when you feel like you've gotten to that point, you may want to sell it. You know, it's and, – and people – if they're passionate about it right now, they don't see that down the road. So it's it's definitely kind of something to keep on the horizon. But now you you had talked about uh, pricing and just generally 
where kind of are you at pricing when you look at a company? If say company X Y Z came to you and said, "Hey, I did a hundred thousand dollars gross last year," where would you go numbers on that? Are you off of net? Are you off of gross? Are percentages? Are you off of contracts? What do you? It, it really, it really is going to depend, Josh. First of all, if they say they did a hundred grand, then you better be able to back it up with your tax returns. Yeah. I need to see those first. Right. Three years, three years worth of tax returns. That's going to spell it out. And then you want to see, like you said, contracts. Those are awesome because if they're signed contracts, especially with commercial, then you've got that to rely on. But I have gone anywhere, Josh, from thirty percent to a year. A year's, you know, if they're making a hundred grand a year, then you go thirty percent of that up to a hundred grand for the year yeah. for the buyout. Uh, but then people don't want to do that. Most of the guys out there and the girls out there, they're like, "No way, man! I'm worth, I'm worth a half a million dollars." When you're only making a hundred grand a year, yeah. It's and then, or what they do is they'll say, "All right, I'll give you a hundred grand." You know, I'm making a hundred grand, but then I'm going to sell you all this equipment on top of it. Yeah, and that's really not the way it works either. No, you know? I when you're looking at companies, I've always like like when when Chris sold me all kind of everything was wrapped up, including his desk. I mean, it was just <laughs> everything. Everything was just wrapped right up into a sweet deal. Yeah, and there there was a couple guys that I spoke to last year that gave me some. They wanted a couple competitors that wanted to sell, and when they gave me the pricing, um, they weren't doing what they were saying. For one, yeah. Then they wanted me to purchase the equipment on top of the regular price, and it just it just wasn't a deal. It, it it just wouldn't have worked out. Right. So you know maybe for a guy that's never done it before and just wants to get involved in business, it can buy it. But it, it. What I can say, Josh, is that people should they really got to they got to think about where they are in life and what they want to do. Yeah. And if you got a solid offer, let's say the company is making a hundred grand a year and that's what it's making. And you know, a guy comes in and goes, all right, I'll give you a hundred grand for the company or I'll give you half. I'll give you 50 grand for the company. Include yeah. what do you got? What does a hundred thousand dollar a year company got a van or a truck, some squeegees, poles, maybe an RO DI system, you know, something like that. Yeah. No, yeah. Stuff. Right. And you know as well as I do, you got a big business, Josh. How much is a squeegee? Yeah, no kidding. You know, how much is a how used is squeegee? A, yeah, how much is a bucket? How much is a mop? Yeah. I mean, so, you know, the, the expensive stuff are like the power washing trailers and the RODI systems and the water-fed poles. You know, that's where you start getting into the expensive stuff. Right. But the small stuff isn't really, you know, worth much. And if, if you're getting a solid o- offer and you really want to sell – you should really think about it because if you're going to hold out for more money, most guys, the bigger guys that are looking to make acquisitions, will just move right on and yeah. go right to them because there's enough of them out there. And they're not waiting. They're not looking to spend, uh, you know, two years talking it back and forth until you decide that you could squeak out an extra five thousand from them. That's just not the way it goes. And the exactly. one thing that people have to realize, especially in companies, a lot of companies don't do contracts. You know. If you don't do contracts, all you're buying is the hope that this stuff comes back through. So you can look at numbers, and it doesn't mean anything if they made $100,000 last year. As soon as that company's taken over, those people may have loved the person, or they may have gotten crappy prices. They may be charging a dollar a window on a house or something. Well, those people aren't going to come to you with the new pricing structure and the new things, and you may only be buying $100,000 for $50,000 worth of, of jobs. So you're just buying really a list and the name and the customers, uh, the possibility, like a customer list. So it's it's really a tricky one where people, like you said, they all think that they go watch Shark Tank one time and they go, so you're valuing your company at uh, $13 million, but you had 180000 in sales last year? Why is that? Oh, well, we're really good and I got a passion and I got... Okay, blood, sweat, and tears is great for you, and it helps build the house, but it isn't the house itself. You can't, you can't, you know, you can't charge for that. You can only charge exactly. for results. You, I, you are spot on with that one, Josh. Yeah. I mean, and, and I would never, I would never say to anybody, oh, what are you, out of your mind? I mean, because that's their company. They it's put their, their baby. blood, sweat, and tears yeah. into it. That's their baby. Yeah. And if, if I see that it's going that way, oh, great. You know what? 
it just wasn't meant to be, man. And right. you know, it, 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 the offer's there. If you're ever ready, you ever want to accept it, I'm always here for you. Right. You know, and if you ever need help, call me. I mean, I I'm one of the few guys that you know isn't isn't the butthole that will. Oh my God, look, it, it's the competition. Let's let's oh you know stay back. You know, print yeah. that, man. There is Josh. There are so many windows out there, dude. So oh, many yeah. houses out there, and we are in a heavily saturated area where we are. And we just do what we do, and we just keep doing it. And then, you know what? Don't even look at the other guy. And what I find it, I find it flattering when other companies are consumed with me. Yeah. Because you know what I mean. So if you're that crazy, sell me your company then, or sell off. You know, it, it's sad that that people can't just get along. Right. You know? Oh, welcome. I have to be on the forums all the time and groups and. Yeah, drama everywhere. So I try to be yeah, try to be Switzerland. That's the best thing you can uh, you can be. I agree. I agree. Yeah. So now, if we compare residential to commercial, like a route or a residential, what would you rather have? And does it change numbers or how much you want it, or is it just based on where you're trying to grow for your company? Um, I like the storefront routes because. Especially if there's contracts, and let's face it, storefront window cleaning doesn't really make you a lot of money. Where it makes you money is in the back door, right? Because my guys are out there cleaning a Shoprite or cleaning a Walmart or a pizzeria, and the lady comes up and says, "Oh, do you do residential?" My guys know, and and believe me, it's it's trained. They have their own cards. And I tell them, stop what you're doing, put your pole down, and look at them eye to eye and go, yes, we do. Here's our card. All you have to do is call the office when you go over an estimate right there on the phone with them, and then in, and then continue what you're doing. Yeah. And I tell you, that's where you make money. And we do live in a crappy weather area. So in the winter, you know, January, February, it kind of sucks here. Yeah. <laughs> and um, – well, can, apparently in March too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, March, the last two marches have been brutal here. Yeah. But what ends up happening is it kind of keeps the guys rotating. You know, you don't. They they look for that two and a half month off. You know, where they collect their unemployment and all that. Yeah. And it gives them a break. But an idle mind, I don't want them going somewhere else. Right. You know. Right. So we keep them rotating through, and it keeps the storefront going. And my outside sales guy, he started this year, and he's doing outstanding, man. He's just killing it nice. in the, in the storefront route, and he's just building the route a little bit more. And Chris had a monstrous route here, yeah. and I didn't buy that route. I, I he sold that route to someone else, and I bought the residential end of it. But we're slowly getting back into it again. Yeah, nice. Now, would you ever buy if somebody just handed you a list of names and said, "Hey, this is you know when when some people want to sell their company, they it's their baby, like we were saying, you know, they want to sell their baby." And then there's other people who go, "Hey, I'm getting out of it." Uh, usually smaller guys, guy, I'm, I'm getting out of it. I got a list of customers. What would you pay me for that? Is there a a, a a a cent per name you would give, or how would you deal with something like that? I personally would do nothing. I wouldn't buy it. Oh yeah. Oh wow. Okay. Because if they're going out of business, we're going to get them anyway. They're going to call. Yeah, yeah. That's that's exactly right. And I, we've had it both ways where uh, we've had um, companies who couldn't sell their list because they were franchised, and the list actually was, you know. And we've bought uh, equipment that way. That was a long time ago, and it ended up being that it was mostly junk anyway. But we've bought in just lists, and at that point, if you can get just a list, like you said, they're going to come to you anyway. Or they're going to search for somebody. At a list, you're spending anywhere from like a penny to 10 cents a name on that list. And at that point, you're just doing this. All you're doing is it's like buying a, um, a mailing list from somebody at that point. There, there's It's such a far from booking with you type thing that you don't pay a lot for. And that's really what you're getting in a lot of times when you buy a company that doesn't have like a systems and everything else placed. If you have just a sole guy who worked on index cards and he's just getting out of it because he's old. He's got literally a list of names. Don't pay him, you know, a hundred percent of what he made last year on a list of names because that's all you're getting at that point. You know, there's yeah, it's a, not worth it. it no. It's really not worth it at all. And what I've always thought is that they're going to come back to you anyway. 
All right, when they start Googling and they're going to see if you've got your SEO going right and you're always in the top, you know, three names, which, you know, we are, we're always there. Yeah. Um, they're they're going to call. And, and the people are going to make their decision anyway, what they're right. going to do once they call you, right? Buying a list of names is, it's, to me, it isn't worth, no. worth anything. And the right way to do it, like when I bought out the storefront guy and then we bought Chris, the real way to do it is, that owner should get me, like with all those storefronts, and we spent two days and we went out and we visited every single store, and he introduced me. Yeah. And then we talked, and then I talked to the customer, and this is what you know, prices aren't going to change. You know, that was the biggest fear that the customers had. Right. I came in, I bought the, this this company, and now I'm going to instantly raise the prices, and we're still doing these guys. Yeah. And you know what? little small increments here and there. We did a couple cost of livings over, you know, that was seven years ago. So right. we did a couple of cost of livings. But if you're going to do it, you got to do it the right way. And yeah. you really have got to introduce, like when we bought All County, what I did is I, I made a card up saying, hey, you know, maybe there's a new owner, but it's still the same company. And I did a mailing. I mailed them out to everybody. Yeah. And then my girls were like, because I had a sparkling view customers calling and phones were being answered, you know, all county window plan. Well, oh, where's Pete? You know, yeah. well, Pete's in the office. Pete's still here. You know, oh, he's not going to come clean my windows anymore. So we did. We lost some customers on the a sparkling view side. Yeah. And, and it's normal. If you're going to buy a company, expect to lose 20%. That's what I thought. 20% right. at the top, you're going to lose them. Yep. You're they're still going to they're, they're gonna shop. Yeah, everybody says when you build a business, they, they explain it like you're building a skyscraper. But you're not. You're really building a pyramid. And to get bigger and bigger, some have to roll off. you know. But the continual of the whole, the whole structure has to go up. And you always have that kind of turnover, especially in buying a business. That's why if you go off of that, um, what they made last year, do not expect you to make that this year. So No, 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 no. no. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. And you got to really, like I said, I said it three times already. I'll say it again. Due diligence is important, man. Mm -hmm. You really got to get out there. Like, you know, if I buy, when I bought that small storefront, first of all, I knew all the jobs. Yeah. All right. I knew them all. And me being a cop in the area, everybody knew me anyway. So, you know, it was, it was a very, very easy transition. Yeah. But if I'm buying a company, you know, 30 miles that way, well, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend a day or two in that area. I'm going to drive around. I'm going to look, see what's going on, look at the, the, the clientele, look at the demographics of the area. And then we do a list, and we do them all the time. They're right here. We got lists of companies that are in an area because this is one of the, the, the deals I'm trying to work on right now. And it's, you know, we've got to look and see what's, what's out there. And yeah. If there are big companies that have been around a long time, do you really want to get involved with this company that, you know, yep. it's, it's a fine line, Josh. It really is. Yeah. You know, my biggest fear is going to be when I'm ready to sell this and, and retire, really, what am I going to do with it? Well, is there I, anybody that's in the market for something that large? That big. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because I, you know, you don't want to give it away. Right, right. But then again, you know, what is it? I know what it's worth. I know what the company's worth. I know what we do every year. Yeah. I mean, I have my goals set. We, we have our, all our goals. Budget for this for 18 was done in November of 17. You know, that's one thing Chris was a firm believer of was Excel spreadsheets for everything, systems for everything. Mm -hmm. And we just continued and we followed. And if you don't have a company like that and you're getting their employees now, that could be a real culture shock for those employees. Right. You know, I, I was used to doing it this way for the last 10 years. Now all of a sudden I got to do it this way and yeah. you might end up losing them. Right. And now where are you? You bought a company 25 miles away from where you are and although the employees just walked out, now what? where are you? Now you just, you just bought a list of names that you can't service until you... Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And hopefully a website and a phone number, you know? Yeah. Yeah, no kidding. So the last oh, question... Yeah. Last question I want to I want to know is lawyer or no lawyer. If you're buying a company, say it's not big, uh, but you're just getting a company, do you go through the whole lawyer thing or do you kind of do it without the lawyers? Me personally, an accountant is always involved. 
always. I don't care if it's twelve thousand dollar acquisition or it's a hundred half a million dollar acquisition. Yeah. First and foremost, the accountant is in and he goes over the books and he says yes or no. If he tells me yes, then we have the lawyers do their due diligence. We're doing background checks to make sure there's nothing hidden anywhere. Yeah. We don't want any tax liens coming up. We don't need any lawsuits that are all of a sudden going to pop up eventually down the line. Yeah. So, yes, I do involve my lawyer and I do involve my accountant. So what would a general price be for if you're going to acquire, it doesn't matter, but just the due diligence side, what are you looking at to set aside for due diligence? A thousand, five thousand, twenty thousand. What are you? What's your due diligence cost? Well, the last one we did, the the last one I did was around twenty five hundred between the two. Okay. All all my lawyer did was all the background checks, you know, checking tax liens. It was basically like buying a house. You right. know, you're buying a house, you got to do your diligence there. You're buying a business. It's the same thing. And then my accountant charge my accounts are expensive. I got a big big firm, but <laughs> they charge me anywhere between five hundred to a thousand to do what they got to do, just going through the books. Right. And I have a forensic accountant. He's a CPA and he's a forensic accountant, so he's really good at going through people's shit and see what, <laughs> what's going on. Yeah. And you know, there was a company that I looked at, and he told me he goes, "Ooh, stay away." He goes, "This, this is what he's doing. He's taking this money and he's doing this, this, Ooh. and this." And yeah. So I that was. That was and, that was worth know, it in the money right there that you didn't buy it because you buy into something you never know what's going to happen, man. You, yep. you just don't know. If you buy a pile of dog poo and set it on top of you, now you're covered in dog poo. Exactly. Yep. See. <laughs> exactly well hey i really appreciate it um i know people have questions if you're watching or listening and you have any type of questions for anything comment down below we'll try to answer all that we can um if you're looking at buying a business give this give this uh podcast here listen a couple times and and really understand it before you go and jump in and uh happy hunting to you if you are looking it's a pretty fun experience either way it's the quickest way to increase your jobs um but uh, you pay you pay a dollar for it, so that's for sure. Um, but anyway, like I said, I am a sales rep for Window Cleaning Resource. So one last time, if you have anything you'd like to put in, um, uh, guess uh, product wise, definitely call me 862-312-2026. Shoot me a text, let me know, and we'll definitely put it in. And if you're listening to this right now on iTunes, go ahead and give us a review on iTunes. We definitely appreciate that. And until next week. Go out there and be epic, and thank you to Peter for hanging out with us today. Yeah, man, it was great. Thanks, Josh. Definitely. Definitely, guys. Have a good one. Yeah, man.